online and in person. If you are at home worshiping with us right now or later on, we apologize that we won't have the words for Holden's Evening Prayer on the screen uh, for you, but enjoy uh, the beautiful music. Uh, if you're here, um, we begin in darkness and end in darkness, so it'll be difficult for you to, to sing <laughs> what you have in front. Uh, Bob and, and, uh, and some of our choir will help us with that too. And let us begin our song. Jesus Christ, you're the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you, God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that all change us under set us free and make us whole you who made the heaven splendor every dancing star of night make us shine with gentle justice let us each reflect your light Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all. Let us sing our thanks to God. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For the word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. Our psalmody this evening will uh, be led by the senior saints. Uh, part one will be on this side. In part two on this side. <laughs> Let my prayer rise up like incense before you. The lifting up of my hands as 
an offering to you. Oh God, I call to you. Come to me now. Oh, hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise up. This evening, Lord, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all of creation we might sing your praise and enjoy your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for reading of scripture. for this evening. First is a reading from the book of Malachi. So see, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. And then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of the Lord. And our second text is the gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. So in the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip was the ruler of the region of Iteria and Trachonitis, and, and Lysanias was the ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness, and he went into all the regions around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. For as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And then John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. And every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and then thrown into the fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Yeah, the Advent story. I mean, the, what's really nice, I think, about the Advent liturgy is that the readings that are normally set up in the lectionary cycle start with, as it were, something coming which sounds as though it's going to be violent. And it gets less and less violent. And then it ends in something absolutely unremarkable. <laughs> And that's the remarkable thing about it. It's the undoing of the expectation of... The remarkable is the unremarkable? Yes, exactly. It's a hard sell. <laughs> well, Christianity is a hard sell in that sense. <laughs> yeah, but it's the... What gives you hope about the unremarkable? Um, because it's the undoing of wrath. The assumption that if God is going to arrive then it will look wrathful. <laughs> um, and the realization, you know, this was, even John the Baptist expected that. John the Baptist was pretty thrown by Jesus not being as wrathful as he had expected. And the realization that actually there is no wrath at all in God, that wrath is our wrath. And we're pretty good at it. <laughs> and that God is going to start undoing all of that from within, starting from the most vulnerable place that a human can be, which is as a baby. <laughs>
and they're not even fighting alongside the kick butt Jesus. They've been whisked to safety in the tribulation. And in the days of Christian embracing the cross of suffering are past. That's not how we do it any longer. Because Jesus is back and he's mad. Just like in the days of John the Baptist, and as this uh, author points out, James Allison, we're still convinced that when Jesus returns, he's going to do it right this time. <laughs> and I just loved this idea that James Allison said, which is why I wanted to share it with you, that that wrath that we're so convinced is part of the center of God might be the very center of us instead. That the anger that we project upon God might be the anger that we feel in the midst of a, a hard world to live in at times. Anger at being mistreated. Anger at sacrificing for people who don't care and, and never give thanks. Anger at turning the other cheek when really you want to strike that cheek. Anger at the unfairness of the world. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. The good get cancer while horrible, miserable people live carefree lives into their 90s. Anger at our helplessness at being the created. <laughs> robbed of all power. Uh, not not having a chance to be the creator. These stories of Jesus' ramble-like return, they're more about our revenge fantasies than God. Because God comes to us as a baby, right? Whose first words are likely mommy and blanky, not words about the fires of hell or the Weeping and gnashing of teeth. And God with us does not grow into a Rambo character bulging with muscles and toting a gun. God with us grows into a teacher and a rabbi who is poor, dusty from the road, whose back aches as he sleeps in the wilderness with a rock as a pillow. God with us is not angry at the unfaithful like the tax collector. But instead, Jesus invites that man to a meal, makes room for him at his table, makes room for him at his party, and accepts him as he is. God with us, Jesus, doesn't appear to be wrathful in the Gospels that we have. would rather offer his hands to be nailed onto a cross than fight back, raise up an army, destroy those who are about to destroy him. God with us. Jesus even forgives those that pounded those nails through his wrists and through his feet. Unless we think that God is schizophrenic, Spouting words of love and invitation one minute and judgment and anger the next. We might just have to settle for an unwrathful God revealed in a baby. A God that is truly full of love and whose only anger is when we ruin our lives by not accepting and receiving that love. May the love that comes to us this Christmas finally put to rest the wrath and anger that is within each of us. Amen.
Others are coming in and going out. Stand.
An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. and salvation we pray to you for peace between nations for peace between peoples for us who are gathered to worship praise you. For all of your servants who live out your gospel, for all those who govern that justice might guide them,
Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Holy God, we lift up this evening those names that are heaviest on our hearts, naming those aloud now as a congregation. Donovan. Allegra, Kathy, Terry, John and Joanna, Pat, Jeff, Anna, Terry. We hear these names, Lord. May the power of your spirit work within us to reach out in love. Amen. Pray with me, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 292. Not, not what's in your Advent handout. It's hymn 292 in your hymnal. Love has come.
us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever life for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Thanks be to God.